everybody welcome back to the channel this is life with nessa and i i'm nessa and i and today i want to talk to you guys about my book yes guys it's been complete and um it's available at uh, it's available on amazon as a paperback so this is a paperback version this is marked not for resale because this is my copy this is called an author's copy right and it's really just for me to have proof for it before it was complete or before it was available on amazon so you have the paperback copy and you have the ebook right you can get on your kindle if you have amazon kindle now the prices differ for the paperback versus the ebook the paperback is for 13 dollars and the ebook is for 9.99 i believe it is right now um yeah but i'm super super excited for it um you can see the back here it has like just an overview of what the book is about it tells a little bit about me and you can see my picture there can you see it um anyways um yeah and again the book was called as i told you guys before know that you're gone and it is a collection of poems for the healing woman and a simony and big person hold up yes um about the book for those of you who this is your first time seeing this channel so i'm just gonna read what it is that i wrote on the back of the book so you would see this description when you go into amazon and you can just type the name in now that you're gone and just search for it and it will come up um and the description for this as written on the back of this book it says this book was written to chronicle a toxic relationship from beginning to end it is a testament that as children of god we should always seek to be in his will and put nothing before him the poems reflect real life events and emotions and charts this idolatrous relationship from beginning to end in poetry if you take nothing else from this book let it be a reminder that god does not prosper sin he's a jealous god and will not share his glory with another I pray that between these covers you will get a greater appreciation for who God is, the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, and what it means to be obedient and to flee sin. No, it's not a very thick book, right? Like as you can see, it's not like super super thick. And that's because though I did have material enough to could have made this a very thick book, I really didn't want to make it a thick book. I think the overview, because I didn't want to focus too much on the relationship itself, to be honest. I didn't want to focus a lot on what kind of happened in it and kind of go into all these boring details and whatever i could have because i did have material that would have given you that idea of what had happened but i didn't want to do that after initially when the things were in it, it was really a, um a medium of expressing myself for me initially when the when the when the poems were being written it was just a medium of expressing myself to express my pain to have an outlet to vent right because yes i was talking to my friends and i had talked to my friends and all of my friends and they were there with me the whole time and they helped me as much as they could through it but there was still so much pent up in me that i don't think words in a conversation could have brought out i've always been someone to write my feelings down um or just write overall to cope to encourage myself whatever and so that's how they started to kind of write everything um to kind of get through it a little better but i didn't want to focus on the relationship itself as i said now this book for me the when i reviewed it or when i decided to actually make the book and when i reviewed it i wanted it to be focusing more on how i got out of what i was in in terms of the emotional distress in terms of the emotions that i was i i was feeling at the time what had led me to be even in the situation in the first place and where i wanted to be the end result and the end goal now being a christian and falling into for a, a, a relationship filled with fornication and, and lust and sin sometimes it's hard for us to admit that um it's not only the person's fault that did what they did because he did what he did and i'm never going to take the blame away from him but it wasn't only his fault um it was also my fault there was a lot of it that was me a lot of it that was me not being rooted and grounded in christ a lot of it that was me not being um confident in who god said i was and what he had called me to and there was a lot that i needed to work on and so this book i wanted it to reflect that more than anything that's happened between us yes it's important and yes it played a part in the book even being co coming together but there was another aspect that i wanted to focus on another aspect that i wanted to to be highlighted and so that was it so there's a there are a few poems in here you know it will start out how we started out um what those emotions were like 
and then you know when everything started to break down what those that what that was like what i saw what i felt um and then just having the actual ta-da <laughs> moment come out um and so after that you know it tells you how i found out about everything in a poetic way and it's it's just a short way it's not because if we're honest the the, the poem and the, the poem that that dictate that tells how i found out about his infidelity or about what was happening behind the scenes or no, not how i found out what confirmed with beyond a shadow of a doubt what was happening because before all of this happened i saw signs i knew there were ways, there were days there were times there were different events that happened that told me that this was happening but i convinced myself otherwise and there is a poem in here that talks about it that i saw the signs and i chose not to and the poem is called um let me see deception right right it's called deception and it basically tells just the emotions that i'm feeling Oh, I'm seeing that the earth there are lies and there are holes in stories and everything is not as it seems and that I choose to give him the benefit of the doubt and so Santa didn't know I did but I remember praying a prayer um like probably two weeks before I found out beyond a shot of a doubt that this is actually what's happening or having him just confess to me that this is what was happening anyways in uh, as best as he probably could at the time because you know whatever but I remember praying and I said, God, I need to leave. Obviously, I can't for whatever reasons. I need you to show me beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is what is happening. Um, I don't want it to be explained away. You should not be able to explain this away. I should not be able to twist it any other way to say, oh, it could be this, it could be that, whatever. And so said, so done. And so that point where I actually find out or it leads up to me him confessing everything that's been happening um it's called the veil is lifted right and it, it really did feel like a veil was lifted over my from over or from over my face as i said because i was living in this heavy denial and doubt not doubt but heavy denial of what was the truth i didn't want to come to terms with it i didn't want to face it so it's like i just put a veil over my head over my face and i wasn't seeing exactly what was happening and so as I said, the events that lead up to this confession is called The Veil is Lifted. And then we have the confession itself. That's literally the title of the poem where he begins to tell me everything that happened. Eh, more or less, because not all of it was true at the time as well as I later found out not all of it was true. But yeah, it's called The Confession. Um, and it tells just the, the, the feelings I was feeling as I was hearing this, this series of events. And then from that so the first couple of poems probably up to page 17 focuses on the relationship itself and that's my, um including probably two or three pages that has nothing to do with it two yeah two or three pages that has nothing to do with the poem itself like table contents introduction so on so the first i'd say 14 pages or 15 pages deals with that part of it and then after that we go into me just how i felt coming to terms with what was happening and then it fast forwards to me going back to god and finding solace and peace and and um getting the pieces of my life the pieces of me put back together because that really shattered me at that point in time so having the pieces of me put back together based on the fact that i had to go back to god and there is even one here and i love this one so much it's called at the altar it's called at the altar and i'm just going to read a few verses from it um and i think as i said this is this is this is me this is literally what happened just in a poetic way it says i take my heart broken in my hand i find myself at the altar on my knees i can't even stand i cry so many tears as i really realize what i had done i walked away from the true only begotten son to chase a dream a fairy tale my ideal story all the while not realizing 
how deep I'd fallen into idolatry. I compromised my faith, your trust, my life. I dropped it all at the promise of, of him making me his wife. I come now before you, broken and embarrassed, with no words seemingly able to communicate my disgust. Angry with myself and my choices, I just want to die. The only word I can seem to utter is, Lord, why? And these were really emotions that I had. As I said, I love this piece because it really, this is something that happened. I remember one night I was so just overtaken with grief and anger and disappointment and all these things that I left my house. Um, I had asked my, my friend had come over to check on me and I left her with my daughter and I just, I just drove. I, I didn't know where I was going at the time. And then I came to this crossroad, which was like ironic because I was, it was like I was at a crossroad in my, in my life. And I had, there was left to go on the main, um, to go into the town, and then there was the right to go to my church. And I, I, st- I parked there for a couple of minutes, and I decided to go to church. And I was at, I drove up into the church. Our church was closed, of course, because this was like in the middle of the night in the week. And I just started to pray and shout and scream, because that was the only way I thought I could have found comfort at the time. And so the, the poem at the altar really is. These are real emotions, real thoughts, real feelings, real everything. I, at one point, I thought I was going to die. My body felt like I was going to die. Heartbreak feels like you're going to die at one point or another. And I don't think people really talk about that. How much it really pains you physically, not only emotionally, but physically to go through a, a betrayal, um, a broken relationship, especially in of that nature. And so, at the altar, is one of my favorite pieces in the book. And it talks about, again real things that I was going through that I was facing that I was experiencing that I was thinking and it goes off into just me coping through that tumultuous time and then it gets up to the point where I am at no where I am better and it ends out with this piece it's called to the prodigal child with love now this has nothing to do personally to say um, it speaks anything about my personal situation, but I was a prodigal child, and so I thought, who better to write um, to a saved person or somebody who have come to know Christ, but for whatever reason you're not living according to His precepts and according to His His will because of whatever, be it a relationship, be it money, be it job, be it whatever, lust of the world, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, whatever. Um, and I just wanted to write something to them as an encouragement, especially if this is the case where you have gone through heartbreak, you have gone through something traumatic like this. I just wanted to write um, something to them. And it's also another favorite piece of mine. And I'm going to read like the first couple of verses. It says, Dear prodigal child, I know you left home and have been gone for a while. It seems like you're too far gone to be redeemed. Well, my dear, that is yet to be seen. No matter what you have done, your father still loves you. He will leave the 99 to come and rescue you. The God of the universe is interested in you. The devil whispers lies in your ears that for you, God no longer cares. But what does God say? And it goes on to tell what God says about the backslider, what God says about the, the, the lost sheep, you know. Bible says that you leave the 99 to go and find that one and so that's how the book ends out with the letter to the prodigal child just an encouragement for those of us who have been saved who have walked away from the faith you're no longer living according to the precepts that God has called you to just to encourage you to go back home but anyways guys um I'm super super excited I you i'm i will be taking some books home to jamaica i'm not home right now and i know that you guys went through burial and i pray that everybody is well i pray that we're all back in good spirits and we're doing okay um i will be taking a few books home maybe not a lot um so i will have those for sale when i get home the price is tentative right now just because you know i'm buying it in us and the exchange rate and so on so i want to make sure that it's on par as best as is possible so um that the, the price will be announced as soon as I buy them and I get them and the price is finalized and I can just clear it. Um, and then I will have them, as I said, for sale. You can also order them on Amazon if you want to do that. If you have Amazon Prime, you won't pay for shipping. If you don't have Amazon Prime, then you will have to pay for shipping. 
I think shipping is probably like $2.99 or something, I'm not sure. And then it, depends, it may depend on where in the US you are. And then again, if you don't want to get the paperback version, which this is the paperback version, this is my author's copy. As I said, that's why it's written up for resale, but your copy will not look like this. I should get a copy in the week and then I can show you what that looks like for regular resale. But this is my author's copy. It just won't have this band right here that says not for resale. That's just it. This won't be there, but you'll get everything else looking the same. So if you want the paperback version, you can go on Amazon and you can order it. You can just type in the title, know that you're gone. I will link it in the description below or in the comment section. Thank you guys so much. And again, it's available on Kindle as an ebook. So if you're somebody who you prefer reading it online, you can also order it there. Either way is good. I would love your feedback on it leave a review on amazon if you can or if you should just be honest and open about what it is that you thought of the book um i have had one review so far and i'm so grateful for you sharika we got a nice clean setup for the review it really did touch me and i i almost cried on already because i was just like oh man um but nevertheless excited thank you guys for watching please support the work please support you know i'm proud that i can i'm honored that i can add author to my um titles um and it is only by the grace of god so i want to thank you all for watching thank you for supporting the channel thank you for supporting me and i really hope you guys go ahead and support the book now that you're gone thank you so much for watching this is life with nessa and Nai. this is nessa and Nai. <laughs> nobody can see you <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you guys Love you. bye